If you're like millions of people around the world, you've heard about the carnivore diet and you've heard some of the seemingly miraculous before and after stories, seen some before and after pictures that kind of blew your mind. In this short video, I'm gonna give you some practical tips, advice, and steps on how to start your carnivore diet if that's what you've chosen to do. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with over 20 years of clinical practice and I've been a carnivore for almost five years now. And I talk about why I chose carnivore and why I stuck with it in other videos on this channel. So the first thing that I want you to absolutely be sure of is your why. Why do you wanna do this? Is it because you have chronic inflammation either in your joints, in your gut, in your skin? Is your mental health suffering and medications are not helping? Do you have type two diabetes? Do you have fatty liver? Do you have hypertension? Uh, do you have chronic allergies, joint pain, gut problems? All these things, including obesity and severe obesity, respond wonderfully to a carnivore diet. And so I would love it if trying to lose weight was not your main why. But if that's your only reason for doing it, then I think it's still fine to proceed. But I, I would love it if your why was stronger than that so that when you do come up against the obstacles that occur at any time you're trying to reach a new goal, you'll have a strong enough why that it'll be able to carry you over that obstacle and into the future and into your success. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to commit to 90 days. And that may seem like a long time, but I promise you, you can do this. The reason why you need to commit to 90 days is because if you just do carnivore for a few days or a week, or a few weeks or a month, you may not give your body enough time to heal in order to actually see the full benefits of going full bore, full hog carnivore. Uh, many people, when they convert from their present diet to a carnivore diet, they have pretty severe carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. This usually is gone within three to 14 days. And so I would hate for you to do carnivore for a week and then say, oh, I felt miserable doing carnivore. Well, carnivore didn't make you feel miserable. You were just withdrawing from your carbohydrate addiction. Another reason is that you need to give your microbiome in your gut time to adjust to this new way of eating. Many people, not many people, but some people, when they start carnivore, they'll have diarrhea for a few days. And many people quit after the third or fourth day thinking, well, this obviously can't be healthy. It's giving me diarrhea. When nothing is further from the truth, this is a very healthy way of eating. It's full of all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and fatty acids that your body needs for optimal health, but you just didn't give the diet long enough so that your gut microbiome could adjust and you could upregulate all of the fat and protein loving bacteria and downregulate all of the carb loving bacteria in your gut. And also keep in mind that the health issues, the medical issues that you're trying to address by adopting a carnivore diet took you decades to develop them. And so thinking that you can eat any diet for three days or for 30 days and reverse all that damage that was done in decades, that's kind of a pipe dream, right? You need to give this 90 solid days before you judge it. The next question is how much, how often? So you can eat on a carnivore diet as much as you want. You do not have to portion control. You don't have to calorie count. When you're hungry, truly hungry, then you're gonna sit down and you're gonna eat meat and eggs until you're comfortably stuffed. Then you're gonna stop eating. And you're not going to eat again until you're truly hungry. You need to not be snacking in between meals, even with carnivore approved snacks. You need to eat one meal a day, two meals a day, or three meals a day. These meals need to be discreet. They need to be in a time restricted window of maybe six or eight hours. And you need to eat to your full and then not eat again until you're hungry again. And did I mention no snacking in between meals? Now, the next question is, what do you eat? What can I eat? So on a carnivore diet, you're going to eat animal products only. You're not going to eat any vegetables. You're not gonna eat any fruit. You're not gonna eat any nuts, seeds, grains, no vegetable seed oils. Everything you eat is going to come from an animal. Now. There are some people out there that say, oh, honey and fruit, you need to eat that on your carnivore diet. Well, fruit's not from an animal. Also, especially if you're trying to reverse 
fatty liver or type two diabetes or hypertension or obesity, you need to avoid the fruit. Don't include that as well as honey because they're both full of sugar and they're going to slow down your progress. So which meats are on the table, so to speak? You can eat any red meat, beef, lamb, goat, venison, wild game, any of that stuff is fine. I think that pork, chicken, turkey are fine. Any fish that comes from the ocean is fine. You're not gonna batter it and you're not gonna fry it in a vegetable seed oil, but any fish is fine. Any egg is fine. Chicken eggs, duck eggs, quail eggs, uh, goose eggs, uh, any egg is fine. If you wanna climb your tree in your front yard and get the robin eggs, those are also fine. Just don't let them incubate too long before you try to eat them. Uh, organs, I think, are not mandatory, but probably optimal. If you'll include some type of liver in your diet once a week or three times a month, I think you'll find that you won't have any need for multivitamin or mineral supplements uh, by doing that. Then also, let's talk about dairy. I really highly encourage you to eliminate all dairy. Don't include it in your carnivore diet except for butter, ghee, and heavy cream that's at least 30% or more fat. The reason for this being is that the protein in dairy for some people is quite inflammatory and indeed dairy may be part of the problem if you have an autoimmune condition or chronic inflammation. So stick with butter and ghee and if you need a tablespoon of heavy cream to put in something or on something occasionally, that's probably fine, but let's try to limit that and let's not eat any cheese for this 90 days. I know, I know, I know it sounds terrible, but I promise you the benefits may very well outweigh the inconvenience of not having cheese. You're going to cook your food. If you cook your food in a fat, you're going to use bacon grease, beef tallow, chicken fat, butter, ghee. You're gonna use an animal-based fat to cook your food in or to put on top of your food when you're finished. No plant butters, no margarine, none of that foolishness. I highly recommend that you prioritize fatty red meat. This seems to be the most healthy, the most nutritious, and the least inflammatory for the majority of human beings on this planet. So I would say each meal try to prioritize the fatty red meat, beef, sheep, goat, venison, uh, or other fatty red meats if you live in other parts of the world. And it's okay to have occasional chicken, occasional pork, occasional goose, occasional duck, uh, and then also eggs always with the yolk. You wanna always include the yolk with your eggs. It is perfectly fine to use a salt to make your food tastier. All human beings need salt on a daily basis for optimal health and virtually no one has any kind of allergy or sensitivity to salt. We like to use Redmond's Real Salt, but just make sure and use a salt from your continent that comes from deep under the ground and is not evaporated ocean water. Now, the next question is what to drink? Well, you can drink what human beings have been drinking since we've been on this planet, which is water. You can drink still water or sparkling water. You can, I think it's fine to have black coffee, uh, plus maybe a tablespoon of heavy cream if you just gotta have it. I think it's fine to have unsweetened tea, whether it's black, brown, uh, green, or white. As long as it's sugar-free and doesn't taste sweet, that's probably fine to include. And then also bone broth. And I don't mean the broth that you buy at the supermarket that comes in that cardboard box. I mean, make your own bone broth or seek out a bone broth manufacturer that actually makes legitimate bone broth and buy it from them. Uh, hint, it's gonna be expensive. The next thing is, you need to have support, okay? The carnivore diet, even though it's quickly becoming mainstream, is still a little weird to some people. And so I highly encourage you to find a buddy to do carnivore with or to join a group. Uh, there are many carnivore Facebook groups and groups on other social media, or you can become a member of our group. There's a link down in the show notes below. We have hundreds and hundreds of carnivores in there that would be happy to take your hand and say, yeah, I was right where you're at. I'm gonna help you through this and I'm gonna show you the, the do's and don'ts, the ins and outs of a carnivore diet. It really, really helps to have that kind of support, especially when you're going through the carbohydrate withdrawal and other things that may potentially temporarily pop up as you convert to being a carnivore. And then lastly, 
what do you do after the 90 days? Well, at the 90 day mark, you're going to, you're going to have an honest assessment of how you're feeling, how you're doing, and an honest reassessment of how your symptoms are. The thing, the why that you started this 90 days ago, is it better? How much better? Is it gone? How many things are better? In many cases, after 90 days of carnivore, people have a long list of things that have gotten better, many of which they didn't even dream would get better. But with a carnivore diet, they did indeed get better. So that's the first thing I want you to do after the 90 days. The next thing is, is I want you to contemplate, do I feel so amazing that I want to remain a carnivore for at least the foreseeable future? That's absolutely acceptable and healthy to do that. If you're like, yeah, I love this. Why would I go back? Then great. Welcome to the carnivore community for life. If however, you're like, yeah, but I really miss Brussels sprouts or asparagus or whatever. Now's the time for you to reintroduce those things one at a time. Because what I didn't tell you at the beginning of this video is that the carnivore diet, not only is it a very low carb, uninflammatory, uh, nutrient dense diet, but it's also an elimination diet. You've eliminated all of the most common things that cause inflammation and chronic disease. And so now if you want, you get to reintroduce plant foods one at a time. And after 90 days, your system will be so calmed down. Your immune system will be calmed down and won't be freaking out anymore. Your chronic inappropriate inflammation will be so much better that when you do reintroduce something, say you want to reintroduce cheddar cheese, I don't blame you. You can reintroduce that and you'll immediately get feedback from your body, whether that's an okay thing for you to include in your diet or whether that it causes immediate inflammation somewhere in your body. And you should just put that on the no-go list. Or you may want to introduce your favorite vegetable or your favorite berry or your favorite nut and see, does this cause any uh, inappropriate inflammation, or does it seem that my body does fine with this? Things that I would never reintroduce back into my diet again because they have no nutritional value and they only lead to chronic disease or inflammation would be any kind of sugar, especially added sugar. I would never reintroduce grains, wheat, rice, oats, corn, millet, amaranth, quinoa, you don't need any of that. They fortify grains for a reason because they don't have any nutrition. And in very many cases, people notice that after they've been off the grains for 90 days, when they re reintroduce those, regardless of what it is, even ancient Eimer wheat or ancient einkorn, they immediately have inflammation in some part of their body. So I don't recommend ever reintroducing grains. And then thirdly, I don't ever uh, recommend reintroducing any kind of vegetable oil or plant-based oil. You need to always cook with animal fats and always top your foods with animal fats. You have no need of a plant-based oil ever again for the rest of your life. All right, that's it. I hope this video helps. Feel free to leave questions down in the comments. Either I or one of my YouTube moderators will try to reach out and answer your questions uh, to help you on this journey into either a temporary or a permanent carnivore diet. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.